Hey, look at these Jews. Look how they're, they're not stopping and they're not talking to, to no, condemn but, the killing of Palestinian say, look children. Look, we have never said but, look, look at those but, Jews. What, but what is the, the purpose of this? Right. Because in my view, the only thing that that achieves is the perpetuation of polarization between Jewish people and Muslim, and Muslim people. Right, right. So it, I, it doesn't yeah. help with cohesion. Right. So I get you. Um, yeah. I, I understand what you're saying. I, I totally understand your perspective. I think you're being reasonable in that, in what you're saying. All I would add to what you're saying is this, right? I've already explained to you that when we went to Golders Green, we assumed we weren't having the conversations with pro-Zionists. And now the question is, now let me just make this very clear. I don't, want to, I don't want to lie to you. I don't want to try and deceive anyone here. Mm -hmm. It is the case, we understand that many, many Zionists are Jews. But I think that link is consequential. It's not necessary. That's the first thing. As we said, like in Stanford Bridge, you have Jews who are not Zionists or who do not identify in that way. So we appreciate that point. The second thing is it's like this. For example, if I was a sociologist or a journalist or anything, right? And I wanted to have a conversation with an Islamist, okay? An Islamist, someone who endorses a political strand of Islam. I don't think it will be illegitimate for someone who's a sociologist or an investiga investigative journalist or whatever to go to Muslim areas to find that. With the assumption, of course, I'm, I'm one more thing, you. sorry, we'll just add this. The assumption is that most Islamists are Muslim. If not, probably all of them are. Do you get the point? Yes, but yeah. I would never go to an, uh, a primarily Muslim place. And I've seen it happen before where there's been like a terrorist attack and then people will ask Muslims to somehow justify, like, you know, why did this happen? Why, yeah, yeah. why did your beliefs cause it? I understand. No, well, it's not illegitimate. It, it perpetuates a type of hate. No, I get you. Type of isolation. Can I can I add something? It's 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 not sociologically illegitimate. Now the point is this: is that if, as a sociologist, a social scientist, uh, an investigative journalist, I wanted to assess Jewish attitudes towards the state of Israel, that if you no, want to film them, no, 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 and then put them on the, no, the YouTube, you let's, should let's, have seen some of the comments underneath your video. Fine, like, but let's, evil, let's, let's, let's 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 be fair, right? I'm saying I don't believe it's illegitimate to question or discuss with or interview anybody from any group, whether that's Muslim, whether that's Jewish, whether that's Caribbean or anything. I think that that's a completely legitimate thing. I think what we have to focus on here, if you don't mind me just adding, is not just the fact that I interviewed them. Well, let's be honest, let's focus on the fact that what they said. Some of them saying that the children killed themselves. Some of them saying it's that Afghanistan. There were two people that made like Fine. inappropriate no, comments. No, but, but these these are from sentiment. The whole okay. time that you were but, there. But, uh, is it I'm Becky? Not, Susie. So, sorry, I apologize. But lots of people I've been discussing with today. Susie, listen. We have look, look, you you, were, you say you say a lot of reasonable things, and I agree with you so much. However, what I want to say to you is this: part of the problem is that we have to understand that there is a problem in the first place. There's definitely a problem. And I'll tell you what problem it is, okay? If you don't mind, you can, you can agree or disagree. Okay. But this problem is, it's not only in the state of Israel, but it's also in Jewish communities as well. That you do have racism, okay? Racism not just towards uh, people of other faith groups or um, nationalities or uh, ethnic backgrounds, but you have it racism within, within Jews to themselves. For example, Ashkenazi Jews and Sephardic Jews. These things are well documented in Jewish newspapers like Haaretz. What I'm saying to you is this, sorry, I, I don't want to take too much of your time, but what I'm saying is this, Susie. What I'm saying is, if there are cultural issues that relate to our respective communities, it's not fair for us to try and brush those under the carpet. If we said, if I sat, stood here in front of you here, and said that there is not a radicalization problem in the Muslim community, there's not a significant, some number of people that decide they want to, if I said that, it wouldn't be, I wouldn't be helping public discourse. I wouldn't be uh, helping commu my community and also the wider British community. I think that we do have to stand up and say, look, in the Jewish community, there are people who are pro, uh, pro uh, Israel. In all communities. Uh, and some who's anti. In, in all communities, there are people. You that opportunity by carrying it out in the way that you did. Yeah, on Shabbat. Yeah. Exactly. So, where there would have been people that would have agreed with you, and those people should have been held to bridge that gap between the Muslim and Jewish community, you took that away. Yeah. And you took that away. Yeah. And that's well, can I, can yeah. I, can I, can I, I ask something? I feel like that video yeah. really perpetuates the right, right. Like, no, let, like, let me be honest yeah. with you, right? Yeah. I think that a Jewish community is not going to be perpetuated by the Muslim community. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
real progress that we're going to make as communities together, the Jewish community and the Muslim community. And by the way, I don't think that they're equal in the sense that the Jewish community is an ethnic religious grouping, whereas the Muslim community is a multicultural grouping. So it's not ethnic versus ethnic. We're, we're, but anyway, for the sake of argument, let's just use those terms the Muslim community and the Jewish community. If we're going to make progress in these lands, which can ho hopefully permeate the other parts of the world, we do need to kind of get the elephant out of the room sometimes. And I, be I believe that what my job is, as someone who represents the Muslim community, is not to present a false image of reality. There are, this is, what, this is, the, this is my conclusion, okay? My conclusion is that just as there are different opinions on different matters in the Muslim community, there are different opinions and attitudes in the Jewish community, which and some of them are sometimes theologically justified, sometimes they are politically justified, sometimes they are racially justified. And if we don't realize that sometimes you have Jewish people, like Haaretz, always the newspaper of the left in, Jew, in, in Israel, comments that there is racism in Israel. We okay. can't deny that there's right, right. racism so let's, in let's, Israel. Let's, no so what needs to happen? What, what I'm saying is that, look, I've lived, I, I've, I've been in a strange situation where I've actually lived in Ramallah and I've lived in, in Israel. I've actually lived in two different places. Interesting. The, the thing that I've known that really helps with kind of bringing people together in a situation is when you have open dialogue between the two. I don't think you can create open dialogue by doing something as provocative as going into a community that you know is predominantly Jewish on their day of rest, erecting the screen, comparing the, the killing of the Palestinians to the Holocaust. Let's put people to like willingly and openly against could, could, that. Could, could, could it's I, a very no, provocative no, way to no, do no, it. No, there, there are less hey, there are better yeah, ways please. to actually like get people together and talk yeah, to each other. Okay. I don't think that just, is the right fine, way. Fine. Just on just on that point, uh, I mean I think this Israel-Palestine issue obviously has been going on for many, 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 many years. Yeah, and from my personal take, I'm not representing him or anybody else, I'm representing myself. Yeah. So it comes and goes. Yeah. So every time the issue actually occurs in Palestine, everybody talks about it, and when it kind of simmers down in the media, then everybody just carries on and just moves on. So my only question is, basically, from what I'm understanding from what you're saying, is you, in many ways, feel disempowered that he came into that particular area to do what he did and he didn't give you the chance to speak up in the way you wanted to. Is that correct? I think he just didn't portray things in the right He didn't go about things the right okay, way. Okay, no problem. So then my only question is this then, is that, and there's nothing wrong in saying it, but I suppose the real question is this then, is that because, you know, the elephant is in the room, yeah? You know what, there's, there's no, it's not, it's not like we don't know what's happening. It's been going on for a long time. Whether you want to call it religious or political, there is a issue there, yeah? The question I would always ask is, and uh, uh, is that, very simply put, from your perspective, it'll be interesting to see and know what is it that you have done as a community to engage the Muslim community on an issue like this over the last 20 years? Well, I, I'm, I'm from a very unique position. I, I, I've worked in, in like on a... No, 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 not you specifically, but yeah. you understand my point. Oh, like, we have lots of organisations like in Judaism that actually work towards trying to bring the two sides together. No, no, together. no, I, I understand that, but what I'm saying is, is that what you'll find is, and feel free to look into this, yeah, is that other than people that have clear anti-Zionist views, yeah, and I'm not getting into the whole anti-Israel, anti-Zionism, just yeah. anti-Zionist view, then they will stand on this side of pro-Palestinian. That's not a problem because there's really nothing to, you know, co make cohesion with you because you agree, isn't it? Once you agree, you agree. Those that disagree, yeah, which is, as you said, the wider community, whichever area was, I don't know, I'm not from London, sorry, yeah, what have they done over the last 25 years to really step up, yeah, and engage the Muslim community It'll be interesting to see, one, if they have done anything, and two, if they haven't, why? But likewise, it works both No, ways. no, I, I, I'm happy to mention from this side, but, yeah. but obviously because you came forward and you felt that it wasn't right, yeah. and you know what, to be honest, I may agree with you. I might say, Mohammed Ajab, you were wrong in the way you did it, yeah. but the question is now is that let's get past that point and let's talk about what is it that that Jewish community have done in the last 25 years on this issue to engage. I mean, as, as Mohammed pointed out, the Jewish community is made up of a lot of different... Like, I, I'm, and I'm good at that. So, so lots of different communities have done different things, depending on like where, where you but are. But have they really? This is the question. I, I would, I, I'm not, I, you probably don't know, but do go back. Yeah, because, you know, for me, I understand there's a level of emotion there and, and I appreciate that. And naturally, you know, and I'm sure when the Muslims speak, talk about the Palestine issue, there's a level of emotion. I just have a very little heart. So, you know, I'm emotionless most of the time. But one thing I would say, though, is that having the emotional conversation is not a problem. But 
once you get past that, let's start getting down to the actual real deal, what's actually happening. And I would encourage you to check, really and truly, because you know, there's a lot of things that have happened to Jews and Muslim communities, yeah? yeah? All the way to the parliament. There's always uh, meetings, there's always uh, sessions, all sorts, yeah. interfaith dialogue. Yeah. I have no problem with that. However, what has happened and what have the Jewish community ever done to engage the Muslim community on the issue of Israel and Palestine, even if they disagree with them? What have they done in a country like Britain, where we should have more dialogue, we can disagree? And if there's not been, and it's the only reason I can think of, if you do read history, any country that avoids dialogue usually is a dictatorship. Yeah? Now, and it's interesting, I'm not saying we're in a dictatorship, but if we maintain that mindset and not engage in that dialogue, why not? Because remember, dialogue always comes from position of power. Person down here cannot go and have a discussion with the person up there. Yeah? So, so it has to come this way. She has come it's just the, the point. She's come today and she started the dialogue, so I do exactly. commend you for that. This, right? this, this is but, the thing. Like, I, I firmly believe that the only way that you get to a solution is to talk between like, different groups yeah, of people. I agree. But like, at the end of the day, what, what is it I want to see? What is it that a lot of people want to see? A solution between the Israel and Palestine conflict. I don't think that like, going into Golden Green on no, no, Shabbat and, and, you know, like, yeah, yeah, fine, fine. people... I, I, I appreciate what you're coming from. And that, that's my main Look, point. I, I get I'm a solution can, can I say? Can I make another point then? Yeah. The yeah Palestine is also it's not a primarily Jewish versus Muslim thing. Yes, it's course. a humanitarian issue. Right. So why are we creating a further divide? Yes, obviously I understand yeah. that religion plays a big portion of this, right. right? But if you look back in the history, it was a political matter. Yes. The way that it was created, the way that you know after the Second World War, it, um, <laughs> it was crazy. I think but you would agree with that as well. Yeah, yeah of course, of course. Issue no, that I don't. People are yeah. crazy. Look, what was your name? It's real. Real. All right. So you make a good point. I agree with you that it's not yeah. intrinsically religious, it's theological. And I and I, I'm, I commend you for coming and starting a dialogue between Muslims and, and Jews, or Muslims and uh, pro Zionists, or whatever, however you define yourself. Here's what I would say, though. Okay. I think the non-negotiables have to be put on the table. Like, if I make, if I'm negotiating with anyone, even if it's a family member, the first thing I speak to them about is terms. What are my non-negotiables? Okay. That's how I start, okay? These are my red lines. I can't really go beyond that. And I'm sure you're the same. We all have boundaries that we put with our loved ones or people that we... Relationship counseling. Yes. Yes, yes, we've seen right, that. Right. <laughs> now, having said that, right? My, these are the non-negotiables as it relates to us. If you want to start a productive conversation between Muslims and pro-Israelis, Zionists or whatever, I think we, we do have to start with the big elephant in the room, which is, let's talk about the civilian death. Let's talk about the 266 people that have been killed. Yeah, I mean, I'm going yeah. about right, right, right. Good. No, no, no. Right. But let's let's talk about let's talk about a fact it's that is competition. Who, who no, 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 no. Of course, of course. But let's talk about a fact that when Israel detonates a bomb in Gaza, the most densely populated place in the world, two million people, that there's a 75 percent or more chance that will land on a civilian. Yet they continue doing it. And I'm open to that dialogue. I'm just questioning the way that you approach that. Now, listen. If, for example, if I start speaking about an organization, say. Uh, Takfiri organization or ISIS or Al Qaeda or something like that, who make it clear that all right, what we're doing is X, and their actions show that they go, that they actually target civilians. Well, their their actions uh, murder mostly civilians. If I start speaking like that, I don't think anyone would want to have a productive dialogue with me because the truth of the matter is, they'll say, look, you're a radical, you're a terrorist, you don't yeah. actually have a place in society. This hate speech. No, I do believe that, and in fact, we have hate speech laws that prevent me from saying that anyway, right? So the point is, is this, is that we think, and this is the first order of business, we think that there has been a misapplication as it relates to minority rights and there has been preferential treatment given to one community over another. We're both minority groups. However, I, the, the, the truth of the matter is, when it comes to Hamas, it's a terrorist organization. Why? Because it's turning missiles which are killing not even 10% amount of people that that Israel is killing. So if by the same logic, why is Israel not a terrorist organization? I don't understand it. So the point is this, both Israel and Hamas are saying we're not trying to kill those people, but one is designated as a terrorist organization and the other is not. I am saying this is the elephant in the room. If someone comes to me and says, well, actually, we disagree with the fact that 266 people have been killed, 66 of them have Review been children. Review. Okay, and we, we disagree with the policies and we condemn the policies of the Israelis in so much as... Yes, of course, yeah. Israeli government. When we say when I say America, that's my assumption if I'm talking politically. I'm not talking about the population. Yeah. Just to make that very clear, and thank you for making that clearer. 
the point is, if we started like that, I think there'll be much more fruitful conversation. The truth of the matter is, I have to be totally honest. If someone doesn't start like that with me, and someone says, you know what, I condone or I justify, I don't really want to have a conversation with those people anyway. And I have to be honest, because someone who says, well, actually, Israel are justified in basically det pressing buttons and detonating and killing children, I say, to be honest, there's not really a conversation I can have with you. It's like, it's as good as Anjum Chowdhury coming here and saying, well, these guys are, are justified. They're going onto that bus and blowing it up. Do you see the point? I cannot, at that point, we say, look, we cannot really have a negotiation. We can't talk. There's no bridges that we can build. And so to you, you're- What is the purpose if you're saying that you can't have a nego negotiation? No, 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 I'm, I'm telling you that, who, no, no. Let's be very careful and be very clear. There are some members of the Jewish community who candidly condemn, okay, the stuff that's going on in Palestine, at least in saying that what happened there is unjust. What happened there is condemnable. What happened there with children crying, going to their parents, uh, uh, crying no to their- No one wants to see that. No, no, not just, not just- who would say that no, they, no, they no, enjoy watching no. that. Not just no one wants to see that. Uh, the actions that the Israeli government have committed are actions of terror, actions that are unjustified, they are disproportionate. When someone comes to me with that kind of discourse, I can say, you know what, you're a reasonable person. And, and we can have a discussion. So but if, some... if they say what you want to hear. No, 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 yes. no, 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 no. These, I, are, these are non-negotiables. I'm sure you have your own. If I come here and start saying something to the effect of being anti-Semitic, if I start saying like Jewish people are below me or something like that, you might say, you know what, to be honest, your level of discourse is not that, uh, it's not good enough for me to engage with. I don't want to have a conversation with you. As in you want fruitful discourse? Yeah, no, what I'm saying is I don't want to have any discourse for anybody who justifies or acts as an apologist for a terrorist state. So how and are you expecting fruitful discourse coming into Golders Green and then just like... No, 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 to I'm not saying I'm, I'm expecting big, fruitful uh, discourse. Speed. I'm not... So, I'm not wait, so what did you want? No, what that's I wanted to do is... That, no, I wanted to have... It's just like any so, so, sociological investigation. Going to Golders Green... Go, let me tell you something very carefully. Golders Green is not a no-go area in this country, number one. No, Golders Green is just the same as Oxford Street or Marbellard yeah. Speaker's Corner. Jews do not own Golders Green. I never said yeah, that. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I think there's a feeling that you own the, the place. You don't own it. No, oh, sorry, no, no, no. You... No, no, no. Why not? Why not? Why, 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 why is it not your area? With all due respect. You wouldn't go on Juma, for example. Why not? Go. No, no, no. I disagree with that. I think it's fully legitimate. If you wanted to speak to a Muslim you audience, no, you want to you want to be exempt open. from social inquiry, and I'm saying no one is exempt no, from that. I'm saying yes, there are better ways to go about. It's, it's basically this: you don't want to be exposed. Basically, you, there's a community of pro-Zionist people that don't want to be exposed for their vicious and racist views, and when That's we go. Your in, conclusion. From, from going in on Shabbat and having people not... It's, it's not only my conclusion, no, I'm not based on that. Actually, the peace index, uh, I've already, if you look at my, uh, my refutation of Ben Shapiro, the first one I made, I give pure evidence from Israeli universities that show the level of racism in, in Israel. This is the elephant in your room. It's not even in our room. You cannot, no one can claim that Islam is a racist religion. It's the most multicultural religion in the world. Here's the difference between Islam and Judaism. 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 I'm Jewish. I'm actually Muslim. So how are you? I don't saying, know. I haven't spoken to you. No, no, could it? No. So I wasn't talking to you. No, no, you can. Could, could I ask a question? Sorry. So you're assuming that yeah. you're saying it's yeah. not, but you assume the yeah. lot. Sorry. No, no, I haven't assumed that you're Jewish. Hijab, could I ask a question? Sorry, sorry. No, no, no. Okay. If, uh, if you're Muslim, well done to you. Okay, no problem. I'm saying the difference between the difference between Islam and Judaism. Is Judaism or Jewishness is an ethno-religious construction, whereas Islam is a religion. Well, I'm a, I'm a convert. Yeah, okay, so. nevertheless, it's no problem. You can, you can just make anything you want. You can say whatever you want. There's no way of verifying. Well, okay, sure. okay, no problem. The point of the matter is, it is Jewishness can be described as ethnic and it can be described as religion. People that call themselves Jewish do so on two different grounds. Whereas Muslims, they, they don't. When you're a Muslim, you're not. You're not saying you're an Arab. You're just saying that these are the theological beliefs that I have. That's okay. the difference. Now, what I'm saying is this: that there are certain specific things which are problematic in our community. We admit that, and we have to be ready to deal with that. Radicalism, suicide bombing, all of that stuff. There are stuff that go on. We, we can't say it doesn't exist. But would you not feel upset if, like, people came into a That's very dominantly Muslim? Right, right. It doesn't matter area. if I feel upset or not. 
Because the truth of the matter is, it's completely legitimate if someone, if if if, if, if a sociological investigation it's was. Not a sociological uh, no, I'm just saying. Like you're using a platform no, to, so represent, what? to represent. So what? A, Why is it illegitimate? Because you're doing it on a day specifically it's very when so people not want to talk to you. But what they did talk. What they did talk. Come up to you today to have a Becky, say. Oh, Becky. No, it's real. Yeah. yeah. So people like so Susie will have something to say to you, but you've actually completely taken them off by the day in which you've done it. That was the right. whole. So let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Okay. What, what, hold on. He, she said the opposite thing. Hold on, please. Let, let me just finish. You said the opposite thing, though. Hold on. No, no. Just hold on for a second. Hold on for a second. Here's what we say. Here's what we say. Point number one. Not every Jew is an Orthodox Jew. Yes. In fact, according to the Knesset, only 20% representation exists for the Shahs, which are Orthodox Jews. In fact, the majority of polls show that the majority of uh, Jewish... That's ultra Orthodox. No, no, no. Yeah, the majority of Jewish people do not identify as Orthodox Jew. So what you've done is you've, you're talking about assumptions. You've assumed that all Jewish are Orthodox. No, you have Reformed Jews, you have secular Jews, you have Jews from different backgrounds. Many of which no, but point, point one, point one, sorry. So keep mentioning Sabbath, it doesn't matter because... No, no, let, let me finish, theory. please, and let me finish. Let me finish. Let me, let me finish, let me finish. It doesn't matter if I came on Saturday, Sunday, Monday or Tuesday. No, it does. No, it does not. It's, there's, no, there's no legalities behind me not coming on Saturday. No law says I can't go on Saturday, I can go on whatever they are like and whatever place I like. It's about your intention. It doesn't matter what my intention is. This is the truth. The truth is, you are just embarrassed, that's the truth, that the stuff that came out, came out. Let me ask you a question. Do you condemn the man who said that the, kill, the children killed themselves? Okay, now do you condemn the Israeli government? To a certain extent, yes. Now, to an extent. What extent is that? To the extent that they obviously have more power, so they need to be like... Oh, um, uh, uh, see, now you're flowery with your words. No, no, no. It's an interesting point, because just pick up on that. Yeah, do you yeah, actually yeah. believe that there's a disproportionate... Yeah, yeah, I believe that. You do believe that? Because, like, for example, you know, everybody talks about the yeah. Iron Dome. Yeah, yeah. Do you actually know the defense mechanism of Israel? Because yeah, we know course, Hamas know are the yeah, SA-5 yeah. missiles. Good. So you why, why, well, what, what, for Israel, what are the defense mechanisms? Quickly, three. They have three. What, the Iron, Dome? Iron Dome, and then David Sling, and then Arrow 1, 2, and 3. Iron Dome, short-term missiles. David Sling, mid-term missiles. Arrow 1, 2, and 3. Two in this atmosphere. Arrow 3 is out of atmosphere, where they can take out any long-range missiles. Okay. There's no discussion I mean, I about said... anything. I didn't say that it's not. No, no, what I'm saying, no, no, what I'm saying is, first of all, no, you know what he said? You said that he came and he, he's basically destroyed the ability for conversation. But yeah, you, because of him coming, you're here. It's the opposite. You came to converse with him because of what he did. Okay, but on his platform, he's showcasing something that's not proportionate. Yeah, but it's not accurate. Right, okay. It's not an accurate reflection. No, no, no. Right, exactly. You agreed with us that earlier that that wasn't the right way to carry out. If you're there for a dialogue... No, no, talk about the main issue. We need to talk about people that have different opinions. Yeah. More people that would come up to you and you're saying that, like, oh, they're not orthodox Jews. So are you saying that everyone practices in the same way? No. Because I'm pretty sure they no, don't. No, 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 the, the dialogue's going sideways. No, no, no. Here's, here, I don't think you understand where I'm coming from here. Yeah, yeah. In, on my channel, if you're talking about my YouTube channel, right? I have different discourses. I have a video of an ultra-orthodox, Hasidic orthodox Jew, because you've got Haredi, you've got different things, being pro-Palestine. I've had... I put up today, I put up a video talking about how Islam is inherently, cannot be anti-Semitic uh, anti because the Prophet married a Jewish woman and for other reasons that we believe in the Jewish prophets and so therefore attacking them for their Jewishness is tantamount to blasphemy. So I have these things, I try and educate my community on not to be anti-Semitic. But what you need to do is you need to now take a stance like I have taken with my community, with yours. You need to now, what you've said, if you don't mind, hold on. Thing. So, if you look onto your video, there's so many anti-Semitic comments. Okay, like, I, that, I'm not controlled of the comments. Exactly, so you no, hold no, your hand you, can't, you no, make no, a video no, no. that's no, no, very are you, are you you actually, you, What no, you said, no, I'm Semitic. It's, it's fine, I can't control no, no, comments. No, no, you said comments. No, my comments are not my co I can't, they're but not my comments. But people interpret from your video. Alright, no, 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 please. People I don't, interpret that, that. That means nothing to me. All I say is this, if I, I'm speaking now of someone, do you interpret what I'm saying is anti-Semitic? No, I didn't say that, good, good. but what, I'm trying to have a dialogue with you, right, and well, I I'm think you're becoming you. very like, aggressive yeah. about that. I'm not trying broke. to be aggressive, honestly, I really am not. What I'm trying to say to you, uh, Susie, is this. What I'm trying to say to you is, what you've done there is a very gallant step and a brave step and a very commendable step that you've come to me today, all three of you, and I do, I do, often, I, I do welcome this kind of discourse, honestly. 
that you've come and done two things which I have to commend you for. Number one, that you've come and approached me, okay, which I appreciate and I welcome. And number two, that you've condemned the Israeli government for what they've done in terms of killing civilians. Now, I think that we should build from this in terms of relationship. And what we should say is this, that just as you have been able to condemn the Israeli government for what they've done in, uh, in Gaza and in other places, uh, in the West Bank and the settlements and all that, I'm not sure if you agree with that or disagree with it. Maybe I should ask you, in fact, what do you think of what's going on in uh, Sheikh Jarrah? I'm very against what's going on. Okay, good. So, you, so we, we have a lot it's to... It's not about that. My, right. my initial point was I came to you very upset that I saw a video on YouTube. Fine, fine. I see, I see where you're coming to, from. To so, okay, let's, let's... I don't want to make you upset. Yeah. Susie, I don't want to make you upset. Ria, I don't, what's her name? Chaya. 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 I don't, I don't want to make any of you upset, okay? So here's what we're going to do, okay? We are going to make a video together right now, okay? And it's going to be the counterbalance for that video. And what I'm going to say is this. I'm going to make it very, very clear to the Muslim audience, and not just to the Muslim audience, but to the international audience that I have, okay? That, number one, and tell me if you like this, if it's to your liking, if it's not to your liking, tell me what you think I should add. And then we can have a discussion. Number one, not all Jewish people are the same. Jewish people are not a monolithic entity. Oh, and no, and in fact, I want to say something that the Quran even mentions that. The, just to let people know, and I will give you theological justification here. The Quran says, Min ahl al kitabi min ant man in ta man who be dinarin be kintarin you add dihi ilayk. If you give, there's some people from the Jews and Christians who, if you give a hoard of treasure to them, he'll give it back to you. In other words, you can trust them. And some of them is that if you give them one coin, they'll never give it back to you. In other words, there are, there are different types of Jews and Christians. They're not all the same. Some of them are very trustworthy. Some of them are very loyal. Some of them are very respectful. And the same message, yeah, and the same message is given about Muslims. Some of them are middle balance. Some of them are very, uh, very good, and some of them are oppressive to themselves. The point is, is that I, from what I understand of the Quran, is that essentialism or a sweeping generalization of a community is something that the Quran warns against. And so I say to you today, and to your community, I, I, I put this as a message to the Muslim community, that do not, and I'm speaking to the cameras directly, and tell me if it's your liking, because you've come and done something which I think is very gallant and very brave and respectful. And in fact, so much, I think the Muslims should give you a round of applause for I it. I think so. Yes, please. I think everyone should give up because they've condemned. They, they, have condemned, they have condemned the, the, the actions of Israel. They have, they have spoken the truth. She doesn't like what's happening, Sheikh Zara. She said to me, look, but on the other hand, she has her own concern. She said, well, I came on God's green. I say, look, you're right. Maybe I was not, I'll be honest. I'll totally, totally honest. I didn't even know that it was the Sabbath. I forgot. I totally forgot. And that's my. No, honestly, honestly, no, we, went to we went to other places. I want to be honest with you. We didn't even. Did you think about it? We didn't even remember. I honestly. Know. So I, here's here's what I'll do for you, and for the Jewish community at home. Turn around so we can all be saying it together. <laughs> no, 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 Okay, no, you don't no. want to turn around. It's fine. <laughs> so look to the Orthodox Jews who have uh, opinions <laughs> like these, who are moderates, <laughs> who are reasonable, and who, I apologize for coming on Sabbath day. I I give you an apology from me to you. And this is an olive branch. Now, I don't want to create tension between our communities. And if it caused anybody who is reasonable, like these three young ladies here, to be upset, then then we, we apologize for that. That's not that's not the intention. Honestly, it was not. So that's I, is that to your liking? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Okay. No problem. <laughs> so already already we said this is a good conversation now, right? We yeah. said number one. We condemn the actions of any civilian that is being targeted, whether from either side. Yeah. Yeah. We don't. We don't accept this. Targeting civilians, we really, I, I'm totally against that, honestly. And anyone who does that, when you know that, like, honestly, I could not bring myself to fire a missile or detonate a bomb, knowing that there's a, such a high chance, in fact, a higher chance that a child will be killed. Me, I'm not doing no jihad by doing that, no, nothing. For me, that is just killing children. And that we're not in the business of killing children, honestly. We're not in the business of that. There's no celebration in that. When, when I look at the Israeli toll of death, the civilians, even if it's one, the Quran says, It's like he called all of humanity. This is not a win for us when we see a child or a grieving Jewish woman or being displaced or something like that. We don't like that. Honestly, the Prophet Muhammad, just to let you know, he saw a woman on the battlefield killed and he said, It wasn't for her to be killed. So, what do you think the Prophet would say if he went to Tel Aviv 
or any other place and he saw women and children being killed, do you think he said, go to Hamas, go, I don't know. He would say, the same thing. It wasn't for her to be killed. It wasn't for her. She's not a combatant. These, we don't believe in, I'm very, very careful. I'm very honest, open. We do not believe in killing combatants. And we do not believe in that that is a, a reason no, for celebration. Sorry, non-combatants, I thought, thank you. <laughs> so here, the point is this. For everyone to know, if, if coming on Golden Screen on a holy day, it ruffled anyone's feathers. We forgot about that holy day. I didn't know, I forgot. I know about the Sabbath, but I didn't know, yeah, number one. Number two, we weren't looking necessarily for Orthodox Jews, but no problem. But well, for the sake of, for I mean, the sake of... I remember I was speaking to one of them and I said, your Sabbath starts after Sensei. He said, no, our Sabbath is now. Yeah, yeah, it finishes on Sabbath. That's fine. We say, look, we, wanna, we want to create a good environment for Muslims and Jews in this country because the Quran is candid about this. It says, Chapter 16, verse 8. In Allah, you have been more that Allah does not forbid you for being just with those disbelievers and non Muslims, yeah, who don't take you out of your homes and they don't try and kill you or take you out of your homes, that you be just with them and you be good with them because God loves the just ones. In other words, we are commanded that if there's someone that's not doing exactly what's happening in Sheikh Jarrah, people being taken out of their homes or in other places. Because the, the next verse is in the Mayan Herkum and the Ladina. The next verse is saying actually God does forbid you to be good with those guys that are taken out of your homes, by the way. And that's why I said my, my uh, non negotiable is because you said what you said, which is that you condemned Israel's actions. And you said, I say, look, you've fulfilled my criteria for uh, good conversation. And we can. This, this, is, this is a, but like, even if I said the worst thing that you didn't want to hear, I just feel like if you really want dialogue with someone, you have to start at the most ugliest point of it. And that's how you get people to understand. Each I get other. it. But I, I'll be honest with Make you. Make it honest, though. Can I, can I be honest? honest. Like, Let me tell you something. Willing, if, if you're, someone you're come to me. And you really want peace, look, look, that's what you're I, I, I agree. But here's my point. If someone Taking, if someone's kicking someone out of their home and killing them, I don't think they want peace. The point is, is that with those who don't want peace, we say to them very clearly, we say to them, we can't have conversations with you. But that's never going to achieve a solution. No, it, I know situation. that, but we are actually forbidden from having conversations and being nice to these people. But do you want a solution? No, no, a solution is only going to, with those people, we can't have solutions. If they don't want peace, no, do, you know, do you know what the Quran actually states on this matter? If they come with peace, then go to them with peace and rely upon God. If someone is, look, let me tell you something. If I'm walking in the street right now and someone tries to slap my face, I'm not going to say, let's have a conversation. I'll be honest with you. I'm not going to have that. I want to be open and honest. I'm saying that there are some no negotiables, but you have not, uh, you, you, they, they don't exist in this conversation. That's why I'm saying with those particular uh, people in the Jewish community like yourselves, moderates, who don't uh, support this, uh, the rogue state of Israel in their actions and, and bombardments of the Palestinian civilians, we say to you, look, we are willing to make any compromise that doesn't go against our religion with you in order to increase and enhance co community cohesion. Even if that means someone like myself, who has a relatively large following, saying, you know what, if it upset you that we came to Golden Screen, then honestly, I really am sorry about that. And we didn't mean to upset you. And we, uh, and for the sake of community cohesion, we come forward and say, you know, if, there, if there's anything we can do to, to, to make up for that, we'll do it. She made an interesting point though, and I think he gave the answer to it. So for example, which Muhammad Jab said, in the Muslim community, if you have an, an extreme group of people who are being anti-Semitic, it's, it's not really for us to say to the Jews, go and speak to them. It's easier for the Muslim community who are more moderate to go and speak to the extremes and say, listen, what you're doing theologically so with, with is incorrect. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, sorry, I'm not here. Yeah, maybe. With, but so, so, like, no, so likewise, as you said, those Jews that are on the extreme end, like you said, for him it's non-negotiable to negotiate with them. But it's for people like yourself yeah. to yes. go into your own community yeah. and say to those extreme uh, people who are on the extreme end that, look, you need to calm down a little bit. It's not for other community members to do it. It's for your community member. And the question is, are you doing that? Maybe you are. Okay, that's a good point you mentioned. It. Let me say it to you right now. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, anybody who makes a comment who is, which is deemed as anti-Semitic, okay, by these uh, intelligent young ladies, okay, who, who will email me and say this is the comment on whatever you find uh, distasteful, I will take it down and I will block you from ever being able to make a comment on my channel again. Are you happy with that? Yeah, right. There we are. That's it.
international. Even here, it's anti Semitic. No, no, you know Aaron, you know Aaron, the, 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 the two Jews, Aaron and his friend. Yeah, they were chased out of the park. They told us about that. Do you think when I that's because they've been chased out of the park? Of course not. You know, people need to understand our default position is that we don't want to be gagged, we don't want to be told. Oh, if you speak out against Israel, you're anti-Semitic. I'm not sorry, I don't it's buy that. It's not speaking out against Israel. No, no, she, they, they, they no, 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 you're making a general I'm saying, point. I'm, I'm saying what I've been told by radical Zionists, yeah? They're saying if you speak out against Israel, you know, you're, 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 you're anti-Semitic. And I'm like, well, that's as good as a, a, a Muslim speaking, like uh, ISIS saying, if you speak out against Israel, you're an Islamophobe. That's pathetic. But that's what they would say, though. Yeah, yeah. The extremes of all groups Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Yeah. Well, are, you, are you satisfied with the way this conversation is? Is there anything else you want to put forward to us? No, just that if you do really genuinely want a dialogue, yeah. like, take my number, like, yeah. I can introduce you to, you know, Jewish people yes. and do it in the proper way. Fine, absolutely, yeah, no problem. Yeah, you know, one, one thing, could I throw in there for everybody? I think it's very important when you have any dialogue that people aren't misinformed. Yeah, so people aren't misinformed, and I always find in uh, naturally it's an emotive subject, so I'm not saying take emotions away, but people are misinformed on both ends, and I think both ends, and I think when you come to a discussion table, you need to come with actual information, like something simple as you know, ask you how do Israel defend themselves, and everybody just says Iron Dome, and they don't know about the David Sling or the Arrow One, Two, and Three. That's a big misinformation because then the next question is, and it has to be asked, where did they fund that from? Yeah. It's an well, interesting that's, one. That's where we need to sit and see, talk on the table. Yeah, yeah, around the table, to bring in the information, though. Yeah. So, yeah, no, no, I think that this has been productive. Yeah, it was very really and, and what I think is that, do you know, the best conversations are those where we can be most frank to each other. Yeah. yeah. And I think we've both been frank. And look, we're not here to try and arrogate to the Jewish community, honestly. I genuinely believe, look, you're one of the only communities where we can eat your meat and where we can marry Jewish. I mean, Oh, I mean, not that that's allowed. That. No, 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 but there's a reason for that. that the, the assumption of, and that's why I said the Prophet married a Jew, but she, he married a Jew Lost who became Muslim, obviously, but she was ethnically Jew. We have prophets in our religion who are, we, we cannot be Muslim unless that we venerate them. Yeah. Moses, David, uh, Solomon. obviously Solomon and Jesus is all you know, Jesus is a Jew as well. But the point is, and more, and more, and many, many more. So the point of, yeah, I don't know about it. Israel, Israel. I don't know. I don't know if he's Jewish. Uh, anyway, the point is, is um, it, all in all, now I think it's been productive. If there's anything else, you know, you can send emails or something like that. Anything that's on my YouTube page, you can find the email. And any comments that you don't like, anything like that. This has been very reasonable and very fruitful. So I thank you for coming over and saying what you've said. These are the kind of conversations that will, by the way, make transform transformative differences, I think, in the world. That people can see that yeah, we don't agree with everything. Maybe we definitely don't agree on everything. But we have a certain level of, okay, they're, they're reasonable to this extent. I'm reasonable to this extent of a flesh that joins, we're you know, bridges. our cause. We're building bridges. And, and, and I hope that people see this and, <laughs> and, and, and show people around the world that actually Jews and Muslims can have these conversations and can be friendly with one another. History says so. Okay, great. Yeah? All right. Okay. I'll see you later. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.